Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Thursday, September 17th, 2020. And here are some of today's trends in the news on the market front. Poof, down over there in uh, Asia, like that over there in Europe, and down here in the USA. In gold, down. Oil, up. Bitcoin, up. What's going on? Stocks fell in volatile trading on Thursday. Amid renewed pressure in shares of major tech companies, conflicting messaging on coronavirus vaccine, and uncertainty around future stimulus also weighed on sentiment. You know what that is. Bullshit. You got it. Vaccine. And the vaccine is going to make all the difference. Everybody's going to line up and get vaccinated. And that'll make everything fine. And I'm, then when that happens, the markets will go back up. People will go back out. And everything will just be perfect. And you know what that is. Bullshit. That's right. The Dow Jones Industrial Average slid 130 points, snapping a four-day winning streak. Again, this whole thing is totally manipulated. Again, they're concerned about more stimulus, more cheap money dumped into this system to enrich the rich. And the facts are there, and we're going to talk more about them. But you know some of them already. 1% owns 52% of all the equities. 10% owns 88% of all the equities. And the rest are owned by the rest of us. Us peanuts, peanuts. But anyway, what else? The tech heavy benchmark briefly dipped back into correction territory, down 10% from its all time high. Traders were also monitoring the status of stimulus talks after Trump suggested Wednesday he could support a larger package. And there will be one before the election. It's phony money propping it up all over the world in a government near you. And it's also, of course, artificially boosting the markets. And we have Jerome Powell, our Fed chair. Fed chair. Yeah, I got a chair for you. Yeah, poop. Pull out the chair. What Fed chair? These are banksters. It's a criminal organization. It's a front. Federal Reserve. Jekyll Island. Remember that one? Yeah. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And they're hiding from the truth. The banksters are a criminal group. It's a fraud against America. And that slimy lowlife who should rot in hell. For not only that, that's a small one compared to bringing us into World War I and helping destroy more, more of Europe, Woodrow Wilson. Oh, yeah, he gave us the federal taxes, too. Oh, but they took, you know, his name. He was the president of Princeton. They took his name, though, off everything around Princeton because he was a racist. A racist? How about a goddamn murderer? Oh, that's okay. We like murder. We're the USA. You didn't like World War I. Hey, we got other wars for you. I want to get rid of that guy, Gaddafi. I don't like that guy, Hussein. Hey, how about Vietnam? Huh? North Korea? What do we mean? Again, the 20th century was the American century. The 21st century, and I don't like it, is the Chinese century. Everybody became Chinese. Look at the masks. You used to make fun of these freaks wearing masks in China. Oh, and they wore them because the air is so damn filthy. Uh, only 1.5 million people die each year in China from air polluter related diseases. But anyway, moving on, Powell also pressed lawmakers to move forward with stimulus. In economic news, the latest U.S. weekly jobless claims came in slightly better. <laughs> Oil prices, they're up. They boosted them up. They were 39. They were down 39 and change a couple of days ago. And now they're back to 43 Brent crude because, well, we're going to keep cutting back. And blah, blah, blah. we're going to keep those countries that aren't cutting back to cut back. But it's all absolute bullshit. 
And gold prices went down today, and it's the lowest in more than a week. So the gold is up 28 percent this year. And they, 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 the Federal Reserve, you, can, you know, they came out and they said, what? Yeah, we're going to keep these uh, near zero interest rates at least to uh, 2023. All more cheap money. And you know my gold forecast, and it's not going anywhere other than, as I see it, up. And talking about gold going up because the dollar's going to go down. Ray Dalio warns of threat to dollar as reserve currency. And this is the founder of the biggest hedge funds in the world, Bridgewater Associates. Quote, there is so much debt production and debt maintenance, Dalio said. The Bloomberg dollar spot index has dropped 10% from its peak in late March. Dalio said in July, investors should favor s- stocks and gold and gold over bonds. Hey, if Dalio says it, then it must be true. And talking about China, China retraining campaign. What they do is they have a campaign going on to train people that don't have skills. And the government's dumping a lot of money into it because they have a lot of unskilled people and they need skilled people. That's pretty good. Is the program working? Some say yes, some say no. But it's maybe like a WPA program back during the Great Depression, give people skills and they're doing it. China's retail sales growth, the first time goes up since virus outbreak, but retail sales had fallen every month this year before August and are still down 8.6% for 2020. But they have growth in other areas and you're looking for instance, Well, uh, retail is lagging. China's overall economy, economists had predicted a return to -to year-to-year growth in retail sales, and they're starting to happen, they believe. And now with no local cases reported in weeks, shopping malls, restaurants, and gyms across the country are packed with consumers, movie theaters, 90% have returned from last year. So you see it. And also, the housing market keeps going up. They opened up, what do they have, about 5,000 deaths. Oh, they're lying about the deaths. Great, they're lying about the deaths. 1.4 million billion people, about 5,000 deaths. But the whole economy is opened up and the kids are going back to school without the masks on. Oh, they're going back to school, but they're not going back to school in many other countries and cities and states. New Zealand in COVID recession after worst quarterly GDP fall on record contracted 12.2 percent, the largest drop since records began. And again, another freak show over there. They locked down the place. What do they got? About 23 deaths. And about over 5 million people. March, April, May, June, July, August, September. 23 deaths. 23! And and the last one was May. Somebody just died recently. The opposition National Party finance spokesman Paul Goldsmith said New Zealand was heading toward the deepest recession in living memory with 100,000 people forecast to lose their job in the next two years, the lack of pragmatism and a clear plan from labor has made the socioeconomic hole deeper and the impact harder than it needed to be. This economic damage was recorded in three months, but will last for decades to come. This is a disgrace what happened, a disgrace. These little low lives, prime ministers, presidents, mayors, governors, chancellors, I'll tell you what to do. I got my scientists over here, little low life bureaucrats who bend over and suck it up to get where they are. Oh, they get a scientist, they'll tell you what to do. EU recovery hit as industrial output slows. 
The growth forecast for Germany was revised, blah, 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 blah. Growth in the Eurozone industrial production slowed in July. One piece of data after another. And again, we're going to see inflation. It's going to start happening. The Fed, they did away with their 2% inflation number, which if it goes over 2%, then no, we'll raise interest rates. Well, we won't do it. They made the number up, and the inflation numbers are all... Yeah, they're making this stuff up. The inflation's a lot worse than it is. That's why gold and silver prices, again, it's in your trends journal. And to show you how good things are going, two ships sold, trips cut on four. Carnival Cruise Line, the Carnival Corporation unit is selling two ships that were idle as the company seeks to shed less efficient ships, blah, 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 blah. And it goes on to say the sale of Corona, Carnival, uh, these ships, both are, are in addition to 18 ships that they've already pulled off. A third quarter loss of $2.86 billion. And the cruise line said yesterday that it was canceling trips on the Carnival Spirit to Brisbane, Australia through May 16th with the first sailing resuming on June 12th. Trips on the Valor from New Orleans will be canceled until April 29th. On and on. U.S. retail sales slow down points to effect of stimulus withdrawal. U.S. retail sales unexpectedly slowed last month, raising concerns that the expiration of government stimulus measures could be undermining the economic recovery. I mean, what kind of language is that? The stimulus e undermining an economic recovery? Stimulus doesn't bring a recovery. That's fake money. Anyway, it goes on and on. Sales of clothing stores dropped 20% last year. Department sales stores sales were down 16.9%. It'll come back. It'll come back. What do we got here? Uh, industrial production grows at a lower rate in the United States. Now, that's only a fact. Worldton Hotel. It's a new owner. It's the days of velvet ropes are over. They're lowering the quality to bring in more money. New York City's average daily room rates for the week ending September 5th were down 41%, according to data from STR. The city's occupancy levels stood at 39% which was down 56% over year and below the recent peak of 50% in June. More than 100 New York City hotels are still closed. And not only that, hotelers fear a wave of closures is coming as the pandemic has hammered occupancy rates in New York. The pandemic hasn't hammered it. Low life Cuomo, little crappy jerk moron, slimy de Blasio. Don't blame the pandemic. The occupancy rate for New York City hotels is 38.2%. Again, one lousy number after a number. CNBC, 30% of New York hotels in the city are delinquent on their debt. It just keeps getting worse. And what else do we have here? Ah, Deutsche extends remote U.S. work. Deutsche Bank AG told U.S. employees they don't have to return to the office until July 2021. Yeah, that's around Wall Street. That's going to be great for business. Oh, yeah. You know what we're saying about we're commercial real estate. We were the first. We were the first to give you all these trends. These are facts. They're just reporting this now. We said all this was going to happen. And that's why you subscribe to the magazine. What's going on, what it means, and what's next? While all these low lives and everybody was freaking out to go fight the COVID war, fight the COVID war, no one was talking about the implications. We've nailed this 100%. And that's why you subscribe, and please tell others to subscribe. We need to unite, because if we don't, we're going down big time. 
And the more subscribers we have, the more we can do, and you know we're doing it. I hold that 4th of July rally, and I want to hold more of them. But I need your help. Can't do it alone. Unlike little Andy Cuomo, ballless Georgie Bush, the little nothing in Jebby. Yeah, their daddy got him there. All right, I worked my way up. My father helped me be a man, as my mother did. So I'm different than those guys. But I need your help to make this happen. So please subscribe to the Trends Journal, because this thing's going in a bad way. The economy, the social changes, we have to change it. We have to bring America back to America. The land of the free and the home of the brave, rather than the home of the gutless. Put on that mask. Put on that shield. Put on those gloves. Yeah. Lawmakers approve restaurant surcharge. They're allowing lawmakers. How about a bunch of crap heads? How about a bunch of slimy jerks? They're allowing in New York City to put a 10% extra charge on your bill to help the restaurants out. They have to tell you they're putting it on. And the language is great here. Only small restaurants with no more than 15 locations will be able to add the surcharge to the bill. 15 restaurants, and you're calling it small? 15 restaurants you own in New York City? More money for the bigs. Goldman's CEO shops his sprawling Aspen estate as rich flea cities. No kidding. Only said that? No. Oh. Back in mid-March in the Trends Journal, and this is from CNBC. This guy Solomon, who's selling it, is hoping to attract serious interest this time around amid rising demand for homes in less densely populated areas. The National Association of Realtors said that picturesque Kingston, New York, north of the city, has the fastest rising home prices in the United States, and here we are. And I own some of the most precious buildings in the United States, on the four corners of freedom, and that's why I bought them, when nobody wanted them, in picturesque Kingston. Back in 2012, I bought the three of them on the corner. One was in foreclosure. The other one was empty for five years. So, that's what's going on. This is serious. I would rather my property values have not gone up and I had my freedom. Now, U.S. billionaires' wealth grew by $845 billion during the first six months of the pandemic. Yeah, great. As millions of Canadians lost their jobs during COVID-19, Canada's 20 richest have collected and added $37 billion. Now remember, Canada's GDP fell 11.5%, and you got a million-plus people out of work. But all the doughs go into the bigs. Victorian Prime Minister Daniel Andrews has defended his tough path out of the deadly second COVID wave as the state's new infection plunged to a three-month low. It goes on with this story. The state's death toll continues to rise, with eight more fatalities, taking it to 785. The national death toll in Australia is 832. 832 people out of a population of 25.5 million over 525 of those from elder care homes. March, April, May, June, July, August, September. And little boy, little boy, a little boy, a little tiny, mindless, gutless, ballless boy, Danny Andrews in charge. Locking down Melbourne. Cops out there, if you go out this zone, you're arrested, you're fine, big time. And then you go on to read the story. Thursday's deaths today were a man in his 60s, two men in their 80s, and two men and three women in their 90s. In their 90s and their 80s, and they were probably in lousy health, you're going to die. No, you're not, Salenti. When you get to 90, you go back to being an infant right away. And then you have your whole life ahead of you again. 
And what else do we have? Ah, just a little data here. Chronic inflammation. Among those who were hospitalized in the United States with COVID-19, 34% had diabetes, 42% were obese, and 50% had high blood pressure, according to the Journal of American Medical Association. That's only a fact, but we'll forget that. Because no kids are allowed to go out and play. No school. All right, Attorney General Barr calls coronavirus lockdown the greatest intrusion on civil liberties since slavery. You know, he said, putting a national lockdown, stay-at-home orders is like house arrest. It's, you know, other than slavery, which was a different kind of restraint, this is the greatest intrusion on civil liberties in American history. And you know what? I agree with him. I don't know about slavery, but this is a great intrusion on American liberty. This is not the America that the Founding Fathers gave us. Look what they're doing to us, giving us temperature checks everywhere, tracking everywhere that we go. Freedom is gone. Again, please do what you can to help us support the Trends Journal, trendsjournal.com. The only place we're getting, and this is just a touch of the weekly magazine we put out that's like nothing else in the world. There's not a comparable year. Homicides are up 52% in Chicago. Again, no surprise, no surprise. We said this would happen, and this is just the beginning when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And on the presidential reality show front, Biden questions Trump, trusting Trump in speech on vaccines. This is going to be, as I said, a presidential reality show between masks and no masks. Quote, let me be clear. I trust vaccines, Mr. Biden said. I trust scientists. <laughs> Right up yours, Joey boy. You trust Big Pharma. You trust the people that pay you off. Or maybe you're too stupid to know about natural healing. Oh, yeah. Book I worked on back in 1986. Have an honorary doctorate from the National University of Health Sciences. But you trust scientists and you get vaccinated. And so will most of the slaves of Slavelandia in a country near you. This is Gerald Salenti. And that's some of today's trends in the news. The COVID-19 war has changed the world, but who's prepared? What's next? It's in your Trends Journal. Trends Journal subscribers are prepared. Subscribe to the Trends Journal. Read history before it happens. From the world leader in trend forecasting.